guys, welcome to another video. Today it is my Make 9 2021 review. How did I do? I didn't do too badly. I've only got two of my fabrics left and technically only one because, I'll, well I'll explain why technically only one in a second. But yeah, I did pretty damn well. In fact, the best that I've ever done out of all the Make 9s that I've done and I've been doing them since 2017 apparently. Wow. That's quite a while ago, isn't it? Yeah, five. I've done five and I've never succeeded fully at one. <laughs> but I am going to keep doing them because I really enjoy the planning stage of them. And I'll be filming my Make 9 2022 plans any minute now to show you guys soon. So let's talk about what I did get done in 2021. So the first fabric was my teal boiled wool that Wilson gave me for Christmas. And I made the Vogue 9037 jacket out of that. I love that thing. Unfortunately, the pattern, I didn't look at the finished garment measurements of the sleeve and the sleeves are very tight on me. I can get them on, they're comfortable, I can wear them, but I can't get them on with a cardigan underneath. It's only with like my sort of viscose dresses or a scuba dress underneath, which is not ideal for the colder months. I did make this ja jacket in May, by the way, as well, trying to tempt the summer in, it kind of worked. So what I'm going to do is go in and unpick the seams from the underarm because I'm not going to reset the arms but I'm going to un unpick it from here to about here and sew that area with a quarter of an inch which should give me another three quarters of an inch room in both the outer and the lining and hopefully that will just make the sleeves just that little bit more comfortable for me. The reason that I did that is the pattern had so much ease in it that I decided to go for a size 12 and I really like how the body of it fits but like I say the sleeves were just a little bit too tight on me which was unfortunate but it's one of those things and I love how the jacket actually ended up looking it's gorgeous so very pleased with that one next up was the Lady McElroy Hydrangea Story Cotton Lawn in the pink and blue colorway they do have this print on a couple of other colorways I really 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 like the blue one I think I said that this time last year as well I made the KB Grace dress bodice with a tiered and gathered skirt and I also made a 9345 plus the Butterick 5895 shirt out of that fabric and I have about a meter left which I am going to use to line this project with. I'm so so pleased with both of those items. They look great together and they look great separately. The fabric was a present from the very lovely Jennifer 1N. I am over the moon that I made two things that I absolutely love from it so I'm really 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 pleased with how those came out. Next up was some more Lady McElroy cotton lawn. This time it was the Flamingo Habitat which happened to be a present from the very lovely Nancy. Nancy had bought me a gift voucher for Lamazzi and they happen to have this fabric on sale so I bought myself five meters of it. I have made the McCall 6891 shirt dress which I think is now a Butterick pattern. I fully lined it because the fabric was ever so slightly sheer. I did the fabric tie with it and I kind of wish I'd had a belt made but I may still go back and have a belt made from Harlequin with the fabric tie rather than keep the fabric tie. I just absolutely love how this shirt dress came out. It is gorgeous. I will definitely be making more of those next year. You guys have asked for a sew along for that dress because of the collar instructions are a little bit confusing. You also wanted to know how I fully lined it as well because you guys wanted to do the same. So there will be a show, sew along coming for that one and I think I'm going to be making it in Cobra Corsage. So the sew along could be coming a little bit sooner than possibly a sleeveless cotton shirt dress should be made because I think I'm going to be doing it in January but it will be great for it to have it for the spring summer months because I just absolutely love wearing this flamingo habitat one so really really like that. I also managed to squeeze out a 5895 did I get that right? 5895? I think I got that right. A Gertie for Butterick 5895 shirt, tie front shirt, out of the little bit that I had left after cutting out the shirt dress. So I got two garments out of that fabric and I love both of them. I think they are gorgeous. Next up we have this, this turquoise needle cord and I got this I th think from Doughty's or Empress Mills. I got it at one of the shows but quite a long time ago and I bought it with the purpose of making the McCall 6696 
dress to in the winter to be worn over like jumpers and things so like a sleeveless version of that dress just to be kind of like as a pinafore i decided against that then i kind of didn't know what to do with it this spring summer because i made these all up in may i specifically decided that i was going to go through my make nine fabrics as the first projects of this year and i wasn't quite sure what to do with this needle cord i did sub in a purple needle cord which is why i'm saying that i've sewn up nine because i've swapped this turquoise one out for the purple needle cord. I made a pair of the Decades of Style Empire waist trousers and a waistcoat out of that which is actually I think I was going to make trousers with this needle cord and I wasn't so precious about the purple one because I knew I could get more of it but I couldn't get more of this turquoise one. Those trousers were interesting, they gave me all of the feelings. I had a real crisis of confidence when I finished those trousers, I was not sure about them on me at all. I went on to then make a pair of denim ones which actually worked really really well and you will be seeing in some of these twirls because that's what the hydrangea story shirt it's being styled with i really wasn't sure about how those needle cord trousers came out on me and they were wearable muslin fodder for this turquoise needle cord so i kind of like hit a bit of a roadblock with this i have since made the sew over it sorrento jacket i've made it in a green denim and i've made it in a tan colored wool i had made a gertie jacket which i think is the 6390 denim jacket in a turquoise slub textured denim which I really really liked but the I just it was my wearable muslin and the pattern wasn't quite right on me the sleeves are too I, I lengthened the sleeves and I lengthened the bodice and I didn't need to do either of those things so it didn't fit me very well I have since sent that jacket over to Rachel who it fits much much better which is awesome because I'm so glad somebody's going to get that jacket but it does mean that I don't have a turquoise jacket in my stash and I think as you can see from all the things that I've made and this color palette around this make nine collection a turquoise summer weight jacket would be great because i've made the winter weight boiled wool coat but the summer weight jacket would be great so that's what i'm going to do with this fabric is make the sew over it sorrento jacket but that won't be happening for a little while yet next up i had five meters of this pink viscose i think it's still up there it's up the top yeah pink viscose fabric and i used quite a lot of it i still have enough for a top but i did use most of it in the butterick 6380 dress now i had intended to cut out a half circle skirt which is what you're seeing on top of the dress then the dress have the kind of like a-line skirt that comes with it but the fabric itself is quite sheer and i hadn't really noticed that till i held some up and then i was like oh yeah that probably ought to be lined so i ended up using the original skirt pattern pieces as the lining and then i put the half circle skirt on top of that dress and it's a color blocked dress with some viscose that i got from sew over it and have made a top and a sew over it eve dress out of i didn't have enough of the pattern fabric to add the sleeves to that dress so i made it sleeveless but i really really like how that looks i also made this made this dress once i put on a little bit of weight so it was one of those ones where i, t I did it up and whilst it did up it did look a little bit tight on me so i was just like oh I'm not sure about this so I actually haven't worn it this summer because I was a little bit self-conscious self about how it looked on me but I have lost a little bit of weight now so I will be wearing it next summer because I really like that dress. I had wanted the half circle skirt to go with some of the shirts that I was making but the shirts go really nicely with the trousers and also some of my other denim skirts and stuff that I have in my wardrobe so it wasn't the end of the world that I didn't get a plain skirt out of that fabric and it ended up as a really really pretty dress. Next up is a epic fail. It was the polyester chiffon that I had 10 meters of and I bought that fabric as wearable muslin fodder for the 8013 simplicity dress and I made it up and I hate it. I really don't like it. It's on my top five misses for the year. I just don't like how it looks on me. There's there's too much of everything. It's just too too much fabric. There there isn't any fitted area of it that makes me feel that the other areas. It yeah. It just. I mean, I've gone into detail about it in my top five hits and misses, which I will link up here and down below for you. But yeah, it was an epic fail. An epic, epic fail. The fabric itself is beautiful, but it is polyester, so it doesn't feel great. Fortunately, my sister-in-law arrived and really, really liked the fabric, and she is not as fussy about polyester as I am, so she's taken the whole lot off my hands, as, long, as well as the pattern, the tracing of the pattern, the whole lot, she's taken it all, and she is going to try and do something with it next year, I believe. But yeah, that was an epic fail. Epic, epic fail oh my battery's dying two secs you'll have power next up we have another polyester fabric with a beautiful print on it that i made into two garments actually neither of which i finished and both of which are actually currently stuffing the dog's bed 
So they are being used. I made the Now and Then Evelyn blouse and I also made the 7977 but tried to turn it into a dress. The Evelyn blouse I thought was successful but those of you guys pointed out that it actually was a bit tight on me still even though I had like tweaked it so I got the fear and didn't cut into my really expensive £35 a metre silk which I'm kind of grateful and a little bit resentful for because I was all gung-ho to get it done because I've had that silk for a long time and then it was just like oh god if it's not right on if other people can see that it's not right on me then no I shouldn't cut into the silk and now I've got the fear again so I'm gonna have to make another muslin for that that top but that's a good thing it is a good thing my little resentful self is just like because I wanted to do the thing and then the rest of me is very grateful that I didn't do the thing and cut the really expensive fabric that I can't replace out so yeah those uh, those two items I don't have any footage of those two items I don't think I do have a vlog of it and if I can find the vlog I will take a screenshot from the footage because neither of them were good and neither of them I wanted to finish because they just felt uncomfortable next to the skin it was really just un unpleasant polyester to wear I haven't bought any polyester fabric this year I I am not going to be buying polyester fabric next year either. I have had a few come in. I had some scuba as a present from Nimue and I've had some Lena crepe as a present from my best friend but I am not going to be getting any polyester fabric next year at all. Only natural fibres. It's better for the environment and it's also better for my skin <laughs> because I, I just my skin crawls when I wear it so yeah. I mean I do wear a lot of scuba and that one is fine but I don't want to buy any more scuba because I don't want any more microplastics going into the environment is what I'm trying to get at so I'm not going to be buying any more polyester fabrics especially like these ones from the textile centre because whilst I love the print and I think it's beautiful it just wasn't nice it wasn't nice Next up is a quilt and cotton. It's the Michael Miller Bed of Roses in the pink and purple colourway. It's absolutely beautiful. I did make a dress from it. I tried to do a take on the now Vogue of Change the Number 1743. It was the 9357 before. I love that dress. I love the silhouette, but I hate the bodice. The 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 darts are stupid. I've, I've told you guys about the darts on that many, many times. So I tried the bodice from the 6244 dress and it was okay, but it wasn't great. So it didn't quite work as well as I was hoping it would. So I still need to go back to the drawing board and I have a couple of other options for patterns that I'm thinking that could do that for me. The plane going over very noisy so I, I wear this dress I have worn this dress I like this dress a lot I also managed to get a shirt out of the remnants of this fabric as well it was another 5859 I don't know if I have that number right but I did get a shirt out of it as well and I have worn both and I really really like both so they were successful and then the final one is this triple crepe that I have here. I think I got this from Ditto Fabrics. I'm not 100% sure. I think I said it was from Sew Over It, but I think it was Ditto Fabrics. It's a heavyweight crepe, so it's a trouser weight crepe. It is polyester. That's another reason I've kind of not got round to this one because I'm just a bit like meh. And I also wanted to make trousers out of it. Now I had said I wanted to make the Decades of Style Empire Waist trousers out of this. And after my reaction to the purple needle cord ones, I'm really glad that I didn't because I much prefer the thicker denim version of the Decades of Style Empire Waist trousers that I made this year. I much, much prefer those. I am going to make something from this crepe and it's probably going to be a toile for a pair of trousers, like maybe the Pauline Alice Sorrel trousers because I have some really expensive wool up here that I cannot get any more of because they don't sell it anymore. I got the last of it and also it was 15 90 a metre and this, whilst this was not cheap, this is also not so precious to me as that is, for example. Out of the nine fabrics that I said I was going to make, I substituted a purple one in for this one and then I just didn't get this crepe sewn up. So technically I sewed eight of the nine that I said I was going to, which for me is an epic win. This is the most successful make nine that I've ever, ever had. And I think doing it this way has really helped. Doing it by fabric collection has really, really helped. Having said that, next year it's by pattern again. Because <laughs> I'm going to make my life different. I've already, I've already selected my fabric collections for next year so I had to do something different next year so yeah I'm going back to patterns we'll see how I do with that but that's another video the other thing that I had was sewing bingo from Romy Kate now let's see how I did because I'm, I'm gonna move hang on drink my lukewarm tea oh 
my uh, memory card's nearly full. Two secs. Okay, I'm back. Memory card is empty. I can start waffling again. So I think I'd gotten as far as I had done all my fabrics, but I was talking about the sewing bingo that Romy Kate had put up, and I don't think I did terribly well. So she's done two versions, one of which was smaller, which was spots, stripes, floral, geometric, free, abstract, animal, monochrome, and novelty. Spots, yes. Stripes, Technically yes, because the goldfish fabric had stripes on it. Floral, 100%. Geometric? Ish? Yes, geometric, yes. The patchwork one, that was geometric, right? Abstract? Mm, don't think I had an abstract fabric. Animal? Yes. If you count leopard print as animal, then yes. Monochrome? Yes. The black and white top that I trialled for the fabric that I trialled the 6563 out of. Novelty? Surprisingly, no. Oh, no. Novelty, yes. Because I did a turtle dress, didn't I? I did do a turtle dress. And then free, I'm going to say leaves. So the smaller one, sort of. The bigger one. Spots, yes. Animal, yes. Ditzy? Yes, because I'm going to class the Mopsy Fun as ditzy, because it looks like a ditzy floral when you're far away, but when you get close up, it's little bunnies. Geometric, we've we've been through the, I think the, I think, the, I think that patchwork can be classed as geometric, because I, I think. Plain? Yes, yes, I did do plain. Rainbow? No, 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 I didn't do rainbow. Stripes, again, the goldfish one. Nautical, I think the goldfish one again. <laughs> Hearts. I didn't do hearts. I do have some heart print fabric in my stash, but I didn't do hearts. Space? No. Definitely didn't do space. Monochrome? Yes. Novelty? No. Free? It's going to have to be leaves, isn't it? Because, yeah. Nature? Does the leaves count as nature? Sort of. People? No. Weather? No. Metallic? Well, the chiffon that I made the, S S uh, the Simplicity 8013 out of had a metallic stripe in it. That kind of counts. Checks? Yes. Floral, definitely, mostly. Stars, no. Children's, yes, that was the quilt that I made, but I don't know if you can class that. I don't know if this has to be for clothing. It doesn't say anywhere that has to be clothing. Food, no. Although I do have some amazing food print fabrics. Festive, no. Wildlife, again, the, the, um, the, uh, the turtles. That works, and there's, there's loads of hummingbirds in the savannah print, so that's wildlife. And then the last one is abstract, which I don't think I really had either. So the sewing bingo, kind of okay, but to be honest, I didn't really reference it back. I just kind of made what I wanted to make this year. So whilst I did really well with the make nine, I didn't maybe necessarily concentrate on the sewing bingo as much as I probably should have, thinking about it. Because as I mentioned, I do have most of those prints that I totally could have made something with, and I just didn't really think to check and make sure that I was covering all my bases but never mind never never mind I think I've actually done pretty well with my make nine like I say one fabric not made up I mean technically two but I subbed I subbed one in for another one so it doesn't count so yeah one fabric not made up so eight out of nine is pretty pretty good actually reading the comments from this video last time the first one's from Lauren and it just says you know what you could just pretend my make nine didn't exist and then it would be fine and it's like yeah yeah I could but I really like the planning aspect of it. I do, I do enjoy the planning aspect of it. So it was a lot of fun to put together. It was a lot of fun to try and make. And I am going to do it in the Make 9 for 2022 as well, because as I say, I enjoy the planning of it and I already have an idea for my concept for next year. <laughs> so there will be more Make 9s. Hopefully next year I will 100% complete and do all nine things but eight out of nine is my best so far and I'm pleased with that. Let me know in the comments down below how you did with Make Nine if you decided to take part, if you made plans, did you stick to those plans, did you get them done? Let me know which one you think is your favourite out of all the things that I've made from my fabrics. I think it has to be the two Lady McElroy dresses, the shirt dress and the tiered gathered skirt dress because I love both of those. I think they're, I think I think yeah they're my favorites but yeah I'd be interested to hear what, which one is your favorite so I hope you've enjoyed today's video if you have please give it a thumbs up if you haven't yet please subscribe and I'll see you again very soon bye